Welcome to Deeper Dive. I'm your host, Dawn, and today Joe is unavailable. But never mind, Joe, we always pray for you even though we don't see you. And hopefully, everybody is having a wonderful day today. Remember, you can always text your questions and your comments to 954 388 8780. And today, our guest is Principal Stevenson. Hello, Principal. How are you? Doing well, Dawn. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. And so before we actually get into everything that happened this weekend, let's have a short prayer. Loving Father, we thank you so much for this time that you've given us, that we're able just to go through all the different things that are going on in your school. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, and your kindness. And we ask now, Lord, that as we discuss, that you'll just bring to our minds the things that are most prominent, that we will always glorify your name. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, beyond the silence. Who came up with that? And it was very different this year. So but let's start with the title, Why Beyond the Silence? Uh, that was uh, that was come up by uh, come up with uh, by Coach Dan and our junior high students, mm-hmm. and um, it was uh, just a representative of our our children wanting to go beyond, and um, and be able to uh, do something different, and not be afraid to do it. Because mm-hmm. I noticed we didn't have like the usual nativity, etc. What was the idea for this this year's um, performance? Well, the idea, and, and again, it's more of the tack that our new music director is going uh, is, is going with, and mm-hmm. that is where uh, rather than trying to fit the students into a, a preformed mold of mm-hmm. our of, of of our making. Mm-hmm. Um, he tries to identify their individual talents and abilities mm-hmm. and then tries to build a program around that. Mm-hmm. And so it is a little different uh, than the, the the cookie cutter Christmas programs that that, that you'll see um, that are more typical this time of the year. Mm-hmm. But um, he was really trying to tap into the individual students' spirits and and their um, and where, where their strengths are. Mm-hmm. and uh, be able to give them the opportunity to uh, capitalize on on what they've been learning how long did it take for everything to come together oh heavens you know we, we started working on this program you know in august mm-hmm. um oh. and then you know but it's not like all day long you know right, it's, right. They have, they have, their music class might is 45 minutes a couple of days two days a week so right. it's not like it's intense and then the two weeks before the program, that's when we are um, having one group or the other out of class doing intensive preparation and, and getting ready for the program. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's wonderful. So did you involve all the students throughout the whole school? Well, the the first service program, because of limits to time mm-hmm. and also for logistics, uh, because doing two services with little children is cruel and unusual punishment <laughs> uh, for everybody concerned. I know. <laughs> and, so, and so first service was just grades four through eight. But oh. Second service, everybody had a part to play K through eight. Everybody had a part. Gotcha. So, so that, that's how we chose to do it. It definitely worked better, especially for our little ones, because I will tell you, having them there from, you know, 830 in the morning with all the stress of the performance and everything and going till two o'clock in the afternoon most years is is just um, it's a challenge. Let's just put it that way. It is. It is a challenge. Yeah, Yeah, but they all did a wonderful job. Um, So tell us a little bit about the music program that is provided for at Soros. What is that like? Okay, so for the lower elementary, the program is is really more vocal. Although mm-hmm. we do have some some outstanding musicians in that in, in that with that group that we're working on, we mm-hmm. actually have a kindergartner, believe it or not, who will be performing in Carnegie Hall in January. Oh wow! Um, wow. So he's he's pretty remarkable. Um, mm-hmm. Then, then as we start moving up in the grades, the, depending on on their interest and ability levels, the the, the, co- uh, the our music director focuses um, again. He he calls it more performing arts 
than um, than just music. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you will see elements of drama and 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 music and different musical instruments and all those things combined with the program again to identify our students strengths and uh, be able to give them the opportunity to capitalize on them um mm -hmm. it's you know sort of like the story of david and goliath where where david is in saul's tent and saul gives him his armor to wear and tells right. him to go out and fight the giant mm -hmm. and david says i can't use this stuff i've got no training in it i don't know how to do it it's not my thing let me just go on with my stick and my sling and I'll mm -hmm. take care of that giant for you. And mm -hmm. so what we're really working on at Sawgrass uh, in our school culture is to create a giant giant killers uh, with our students mm -hmm. and uh, give, give them the opportunity to shine with the um, with the skills that they have honed and developed and the ones that God has given them. Mm, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So how has your semester been this last semester? been busy and hectic um it, it always is uh but but it, it's been good you know it's been good but it it, it goes by fast you know, the scary thing about being education is that the years go by fast and and you're an old guy with with a gray beard before you know it it's just, it just you know, you wake up one morning and say oh lord how did this happen how did that happen yeah yeah wow 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 okay okay so are there any relevant things um, pertaining to the, the whole structure of the school. Are there anything that you really, really want to bring out um, to say, like somebody listening to the podcast that's thinking, you know, maybe I might want to try out Sawgrass. What are the, what are the upcoming projects that you really want to achieve? Well, wow, there are small ones and big ones. Um, okay. we're, we're, con we're continuing to uh, work on our students' achievement and test scores. And we do, we do, we are amongst the highest achieving schools in the Florida conference. Oh, wow. um, our students do extremely well. In fact, we just went through our, um, our accreditation and, uh, last school year and the accrediting, uh, the, the uh, people in the visiting committee were blown away by our students' academic performance. Awesome. Um, we are looking at ways to, to build and add things to our program. We, we wanted to add, uh, robotics for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But we're having a hard time attracting students to robotics. Um, they have a choice between robotics and playing basketball. Uh, they'd rather play basketball. So we're working on that. Um, we're also working to add a high school program because, you know, one of the, the things that um, we work very hard on at Sawgrass is to create a very positive school culture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a place where students want to be. Because if they want to be here, then they want to learn. You know, it, it's hard to learn in a place where you don't want to be. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, but because of our positive school culture, it does make it um, a stretch for some of our students to go to a different school. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, they, they go somewhere where they're loved and appreciated and, 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 and motivated. And then they go somewhere else where they don't feel that same level of nurture and caring. Um, so next school year, we'll be starting a high school program at the Fort Lauderdale Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, we will probably be starting with just ninth and 10th grade and then add a grade each year until 11th and 12th. Although recently, um, we've actually been getting 11th and 12th graders who have said, hey, we're interested in starting with 11th and 12th. We'll leave our schools and come to you guys. Wow. Um so if we can get critical mass in those 11th and 12th graders, we could be persuaded to, to go 11 and 12. But right now we're looking for just financial and critical mass reasons to have um, 7, 8, 9, and 10 over at the Fort Lauderdale Church. Mm. And um, then the next year we'll add the 11th grade and send 7th grade back to the Sawgrass campus. The next grade we'll add 12 and send the eighth graders back to the campus so in, in a two-year process. But if we feel confident that we'll have, you know, a, a combined seventh and eighth, uh, 11th and 12th grade class of, say, 15 students, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe 20, then and, and that would probably be enough for us to, uh, to move forward with just a 9 through 12 on that campus. There's enough room. Uh, the... Uh, plantation at least this the uh, the the um for lauderdale seventh day adventist church was built to be a school right right it was yeah so so um the facility can easily handle what we're wanting to do with it and then within uh two years of being on on that campus 
uh, we will then be able to move to a bigger campus and it looks like we'll be moving into the school that is where the ambassador seventh day adventist church is uh where which is part of the um the fort lauderdale prep and we're going to take over that campus um and so that that, that that's going to be our next step so so that's where we are with regards to that um so we you know we've, we've got some ambitious plans that are going to involve quite a bit of stress and hard work yes. but it's worth it for our kids because yeah. i personally don't believe it's an option anymore to put our students in in public school hmm. i don't think in fact and this isn't just because i'm a private school principal um with the things that students are learning in public schools now hmm. i believe that it's actually spiritual suicide to put mm. your children in a public school right now it's just not it's just not safe especially um you know what once you get to junior high and high school yeah yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 the, the um the the stand the, the, taking a christian stand and a biblical stand to morals and behavior and and all those things has fallen out of vogue um but it's left students horribly confused and so you know to be able to put them in an environment where they will understand god's plan for them and for their mm -hmm. lives and for their identities i think is crucial um if we want our students to have any hope of, of seeing the kingdom of heaven one day so you brought up the fact that um there's a lot of curriculum changes in the public school have you had any experiences where your students have come and said well you know what i'm dealing with this or i'm dealing with that and how do you deal with that especially with gender situations how do you deal with that you know it, it usually comes up um when we're doing the um the reproductive system in fifth grade mm -hmm. um because uh, you know our science books are geared to, to the christian perspective but those right. questions come up and unfortunately many parents are not comfortable having those discussions with their children mm -hmm. but these are battles that our children are fighting and i know it's uncomfortable for parents to have those those discussions um and so they're, they're looking for honest answers and um that is where it, it falls on, on me to do that with the young men and for the fifth grade teachers to, to deal with that with the young women mm -hmm. and we we are we again answer from a biblical christian perspective um about god's plan for them and for, for, for the fact that following your heart is a dangerous thing to do um and that's not what is preached outside of churches and even many churches unfortunately falsely say follow your heart unless mm -hmm. your heart is following god's will your heart is not a safe thing to follow right. um and 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 just because sin comes naturally for you in one area which it does for all of us doesn't give you an excuse to say okay well i'm naturally this way so i'm going to go down that way you know if, if you're if, if, if i'm naturally an ear flicker and every single ear i see in walmart i feel like i need to flick it um, you know eventually i'm going to be arrested but i go to the the the, the 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 judge and say hey judge have mercy on me i i was born an ear flicker the moment i could flick i was flicking ears please please you gotta let me go because i'm an ear flicker and i'm just doing what my heart tells me to do it doesn't work it doesn't yeah. work but we make those excuses for, for for other places in people's lives and 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 think that it's going to turn out best for them and uh, unfortunately it doesn't um and so to to help our students understand that perspective and don't mm -hmm. allow their minds to wander in that direction you know so many times we have to control our minds which mm -hmm. is our hearts and say i'm not going to go there that's the direction i'm not going to go because it's destructive yeah. and yeah. our students need to be taught that and again and i'm i'm not, I'm, I'm not saying parents are bad in 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 south florida unless you've got two parents working full time you can't even pay the rent down here mm -hmm. and so realistically they may have an hour with their child in the evening yeah. if, if they're not all sitting on devices in their separate corners of the house mm -hmm. um and so the school has to become the, that buffer between mm -hmm. our young people in the world um and um i take it very seriously because I personally believe it's a life and death issue. 
It is. It is. And seeing as you brought up about devices, how do you deal with that situation? Do you have, do you, are you finding that the students are very addicted because parents are too, but are you finding that the kids are very addicted to their yeah. devices? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, what, 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 what's interesting to me is in, in North America, we have been, been very, very slow as a country to um, address the issue of of um, addiction to technology. Mm. In most Western European countries right now, young people aren't allowed to sign up for social media until they're old enough to have a credit card. <laughs> wow. They, they are limiting it because they see the effect on young it's people. Awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely destroying Right, right now, two generations of young people have been destroyed by the dopamine hits that they get when they get a like on whatever thing that they that they put on, uh, you know, post online. And the more um, insidious their posts, the more likes, likes they get, get. which yeah. then encourages them to post more terrible things. They, mm -hmm. and, and once you put stuff on the internet, it's there forever. Um, yeah. So, so, you know, th those are, those are the things, you know, we start talking very frankly with our students and I've been saying this for years, but now it's been proved by science. So, yeah. so it's always not, it, I, I wish science had proven me wrong. On the <laughs> other hand, I've been preaching for 15 years that mm -hmm. giving a child a smartphone is child abuse prior mm -hmm. to the age of 18. Mm -hmm. it's, simply, it's, it's just simply child abuse. You are literally throwing your child away you're giving them a direct line from satan into their brains mm. and um you know if a kid needs a stupid phone that just does call and text and that's it for communication with home and a device so you can track where your child is that's one thing but you give a young child unfettered internet access mm. without without the developmental ability it's not that they're evil children developmentally they're not prepared to make the kind of decisions they need to make to make wise decisions when they're online listen most adults aren't i know <laughs> i was about to say that adults have the same struggle yep. yeah but, but, be, but being a eight nine ten year old mm. with an iphone 10 mm. is 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 is, is is you are literally destroying your child you literally are you literally so do you are. see anything that you can probably implement within the curriculum in order to combat something like this well one of the things that we do which is controversial and i always get pushed back every year on it and i do it we don't allow technology from home on our campus we don't allow oh. phones okay and here's the thing the adults and when i explain this to the parents they all understand if a phone beeps or makes a vibration, can you focus on what you're doing in the classroom? No, because you're wondering who it was. That's all you're thinking about. And it doesn't matter if you're if you're 10 or 50. Yeah. That's all you're thinking about. Yeah. And so it, it might be your mom wanting to know what you want for supper that night, mm -hmm. or it could be a predator that you connected with online that wants to meet you after school. You know, it could be either one of those extremes. And um, and and so we don't allow it on campus. And we I, I definitely address it with my students regularly in chapel. Um, they don't believe me. They're addicted. You know, that that that's like that's like that that that's like telling a heroin addict that he doesn't need heroin. Exactly. You mm -hmm. know, and, and so the, the only way to stop it is for, for parents to be willing to fight the battle and it is a battle to say no yeah. you know it's our job as a parent <laughs> to protect our children it is. and right now we would rather get this we would rather our children be sitting at home unsupervised on the internet than than, than taking the risk of going to the park and playing basketball because yeah. we think it's safer to sit at home playing on the internet well, that's what parents would say, you know, out there is very scary. So why would I send my ch child out there to play when I know that they're right here in the house doing stuff quietly? Do, 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 exposing themselves to filth quietly. 
Mm. I, I, I would I would argue that allowing your child to go free range and playing in the park, data free, is safer mm. than sitting locked up in their room with unfettered internet a- a- access. Less wow. destructive, less chance. Be- time after time, I hear of kids meeting some some predator online and then making an excuse to go to the mall to meet that person. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, going to the park and playing with real people is much safer than being on the internet unsupervised. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, I've, I've been saying this for years, if your children are on the internet, it needs to be at the dining room table with the computer screen facing out so that whenever you walk by, you can see what's going on on that screen. Mm-hmm. If you're not doing that, um, unfortunately, you, you will. It's not that you might. You're going to lose your children, mm. and, and, and there's and again, this isn't my opinion anymore. This is the opinion of the psychiatric psychological community worldwide. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a it's a very big struggle for our children. And um, have you seen um, any adverse situations with their education because they? have a device probably at home when they are not on the campus you know of course i mean you know because they're they're doing everything else online except their homework um mm. and so you know their parents will think they're working on their homework but you know if you go up top and see what in there and and uh, what what websites that they're actually clicking on when you come, they just click out of that and click onto their homework screen. Mm-hmm. They're, they're not doing their homework anymore. Um, in fact, right now in language arts, because of chat GTP and some of those programs, we okay. actually have to have our students handwrite their literature, literature, uh, their, their, their writing projects, handwrite them in class while we're supervising. Oh, wow. So is well, that how you, it, that's it, how you it, get around it? If they do it any other way, they'll, they they can type it up. They can put what they want in chat GTP. Then they can just copy that and handwrite it themselves. Um, you know, when kids do research now, they don't actually do research. They just do copy and paste. And what's sad is they do copy and paste, but then they don't have the good sense to highlight it all and 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 do it all in the same font. I mean, you know, <laughs> and I'm not going to teach them how to teach. But I kind of just shake my head and say, come on, you know how to use Microsoft Word, man. Mm-hmm. Highlight it, put it all in Times Roman, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and and have the computer do the formatting for you. It makes it a little easy, harder for us, just a little bit. Um, we, we still figure it out because we're not as dumb as we look. But, but you know, so, so, so yeah, you know, that, that, that that's a struggle for all educators right now. Mm-hmm. The, the, the reality is... That unless we can find a way to get on top of edu- uh, on top of the um, the the evil that is technology, our children are going to end up with nothing in their heads, mm. um, and everything on a device. Mm. And the moment, and and then when those devices are taken away, all or we already know that they're being controlled by satanic forces. All they get is the information on those devices. And so we're allow, we're literally allowing ourselves and our children to be programmed. Mm. Um, so what do you think um, we should really be using technology for in the schools? You know, right now we do use technology in our school. We have a device for every kid. Mm. There are the, we use a program called Reading Plus that helps our students um, push reading comprehension and reading speed. Excellent mm. program. Uh, okay. We've got a program called Lexia that does a similar thing for the lower grades. Mm. Um, we've got um, th- there are, are are programs that help our students in math if they need tutoring in math. Um, Khan Academy right now, and this is a, this is the good side of artificial inter- intelligence. We've mm. um, Khan Academy has as an AI program that that. Um, that literally, uh, that absolutely tutors kids on how to do math, and it doesn't give them the problem. Mm. It just tutors them through how to find the solution step by step by step. It does not give them does not give them the solution, and then it gives them opportunities to do it, 
and then be corrected as they go along until they get it. So, so, so there are technologies, but all of these technologies need to be done in a supervised environment. Mm. You can't just say, okay, go do this, and then I'm going to sit and watch Monday Night Football. Unfortunately, <laughs> as parents, we've got to engage. We've got to engage. If we don't engage, we, we, we are not, we, we, it's not that there's a chance we'll lose our children. We will lose our children if we don't engage. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are living at a time in the world's history where as, as parents, if you don't get on it, you're going to lose them. And mm -hmm. our children are the, are, are the only things from this earth we can take to the kingdom of heaven with us. Mm -hmm. And we really do need to live our lives in every way as if we truly believe Jesus is coming again. Exactly. You know, if you, if you don't believe Jesus is coming again, then don't waste your time. Just do what you want to do, and and, and you're going to be all right. But but you, you broadcast both to your children and to society in general, whether or not you believe Jesus is coming again by the decisions you make for your family and your children. It's like neon. Mm. And so, you know, I hear these people and they stand up and they get in church and all teary, I believe Jesus is coming again. And then they all go home and they're sitting on their devices doing whatever they want to do on their devices. They're not spending time talking. They're not spending time in worship. They're not spending time reading scripture. They're, 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 you know, uh, if we really believe Jesus is coming again, our lives would look significantly better and different to what they look like today. And that, that's a challenge to the people who, who are watching this. You know, mm -hmm. if a casual observer observed you for 24 hours, what is it about your life? Mm -hmm. And I ask myself this every single morning. Rob, what is about your life that would let people know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you believe that Jesus is coming again? Yeah. Yeah, so very true. How do you encourage the children to witness to others? How do you help them to do that? You know, I'll, I'll tell you how our children witness here, because we do have some children from homes that are, are not necessarily Christian or Seventh-day mm -hmm. Adventists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But our young people share what they learn at school with their friends and their family. And I had one mom come to me in tears. She said, you know, before we, we, we put our child in your school just because it was a good school. We saw your test scores. We saw the scores on, 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 on your Google ratings. Said, That's the school we want our child in. But our daughter brings Jesus Christ into our secular home every single day because of what she learns at school. Mm -hmm. We would know nothing about Jesus Christ except what she hears in school. And they, they pointed at me and said, you, Mr. Stevenson, every single time you speak in chapel, mm. our daughter brings a message home. Oh, wow. And so that's how witnessing takes place in the school. Because he, here's the thing we've got to realize when we choose a school to put our children in. And it broke my heart yesterday because a family that is struggling with these issues have pulled their kids out of our school to put them in some kind of a sports academy. Um, no longer in a Christian school. Bro broke my heart. Again, making a decision. And I told that parent, I said, I love you. We'll take your children back anytime. But this is a decision you'll regret eternally. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, you know, the moment you put your children in school, it doesn't matter what school it is, the teachers have more influence over your children's life than you do. Yeah, they do. Period. Period. They're, they're with their teachers seven and a half hours a day mm -hmm. as a parent you get them ready in the morning and you may talk to them for five or ten minutes in the evening because you're too busy watching tv and sitting on your computer and so there's no conversation taking place so everything that has to do with values and life and and and, and getting along with people socially and and discipline and and social discipline and, mm. and all those things are, are happening in school now that's the only place it's happening um, we we can't afford to put our students anywhere else. We, sim we simply can't afford to put our students anywhere else if we believe Jesus is coming again. Now, if we don't, yeah. You know. <laughs> it's all relative. Wow. Um, so 
if somebody is listening to this podcast and they would like to get involved with helping you to achieve the goals of this new high school, how can they do that? Wow, we need help. Um, the um, uh, starting in January, uh, we're going to have to do uh, a significant amount of um, of sprucing up the, the the classrooms at the Fort Lauderdale Seventh Day Adventist Church. Mm-hmm. Um, we, I, I need people who are going to help me paint. Um, I need people who are going to help me clean windows. Um, I need people who are going to ha- help me clean the. Uh, clean up the old paint jobs that were done badly because man i like paint when i do paint i tape everything off and everything's crisp there's a lack of christmas over there um that, that, we, that we that we need to address um, i i am looking for somebody um who who is a, a, both a strong christian and a good coach to help coach our basketball team um you know, uh, and 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 it, it's going to meet early in the morning, uh, probably at the LA Fitness just down the road from the from the school, um, so that our kids will have a baseball program. Um, I need people to help co- coach my soccer. When I when I was in Tampa, when I started Tampa Adventist Academy, um, most of my coaches were volunteers, parents, mm-hmm. uncles, and grandparents said, "Hey, we're going to volunteer. We're going we're going to help them put a team together." And we and they did great. And and our teams won a whole lot more games than we ever lost um and and our kids had a good time so mm-hmm. I, I need volunteers in, in in those areas um i'm looking for somebody local if possible um for for the high school level music program um mm-hmm. the the high school program is going to have a different focus to the elementary program because we are going to teach them more of the classical style this is going to be you know this is going to be more of of a um an academic pursuit of music. It's not going to be so much, okay, this is what you're good at, so this is what we're going to do. Mm. Um, I want to I want a choir that sings a variety of music, but mm. sings it well. Mm-hmm. You know, so so I want a choir that can do both music in in Latin, mm. but also contemporary, you know, uh, contemporary praise as well as um as well as classical styles i want our students to be exposed to and have performed in those ways um when i was principal of a school in um in near nashville tennessee we did international tours with our choir and um they they had probably seven or eight songs in latin that were absolutely powerful Mm. and um we went we we toured the lima peru area for 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 10 days Mm. and um one one day, um, as we were touring one of the old cathedrals, because the cathedrals in 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 those South American countries were built in the 1500s. Right. Okay. Right. Some of our students just got together spontaneously and started singing Latin liturgical songs in the Roman Catholic cathedral, the big wow. Catholic cathedral in in in, in Lima, and um, the priest actually came out in tears. Oh, wanted to know who we were, where we came from, what denomination we were. The music he said was literally sounded like the voice of God in his church. Wow. Um, wow. I took a group uh, on tour in in Argentina. We performed in the um, the largest um, Jesuit university in Argentina. Oh wow! Okay, we were the only, the first, and the only Protestant group to ever perform there. And mm-hmm. their performing arts center was actually a a former cathedral that was in the shape of a cross, mm-hmm. and then the singing groups would perform in the middle of it with these huge vaulted ceilings. Needed absolutely the the acoustics were so perfect that you didn't need any kind of amplification. Wow! And wow. Um, the, the my, my students performed there, and 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 it actually became a sensation over the entire country of. Of Argentina because there were people there with recording equipment and we assumed that they were from the Adventist church they mm-hmm. weren't it was from the local radio station okay, <laughs> okay? Wow. and they had their very expensive microphones everywhere and they recorded it the bus driver's driving and we play with the, he's playing this music 
over the, over the bus and it was us singing and we said ah. Did you get that recording he says no you don't understand this is playing over the entire country of argentina you have no idea the effect that you've had so mm -hmm. so you know th th those are my plans because we have such incredibly talented children here um mm -hmm. I, I would say of all the places I've worked, and I've been a principal in more places than I'm going to admit here on the air, um, this is the most gifted and talented group of young people I've ever worked with anywhere. Wow. And given the opportunity to shine, we could develop international renown. And so mm -hmm. I'm looking for somebody who's willing to really push them in music to where they don't slide their notes, but they sing their notes nice and crisply. Crisply, um, mm. where 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 their their harmonies are are, are tight, and 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 where the, when the piano kicks in, they're right on tune. You know, I mean, mm. I'm really looking for 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 a higher level of of um, of discipline for the music, because mm. if you learn, when I started playing guitar, I started with classical guitar first, and then went to acoustic. Once mm. you can do it in the classical style, everything else you do sounds better. Oh, yeah. whatever, whatever you decide to do it's going to be better even some of the the best um um secular performers mm -hmm. even in, in in the area of rock and roll i think of the, the rock and roll group boston for instance everybody in boston had a master's or a doctorate degree in music and it <laughs> showed in the music that they performed the level of instrumentation everything they used was superior mm -hmm. to everybody else at the time um so, so that our, our students in music, in sports, in technology, because we want to have a, a strong focus, their coding and robotics and all that stuff is going to be part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, everybody's going to have to take it and learn, have exposure, because the future for our children is robotics. Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay, it is. You know, our, our Walmart employees. Our, our, our kids are uh, the people who are working at Taco Bell. I guarantee you in the next few years, it's going to be robots making that stuff and dropping it out. I know, right? Okay. All right. Wow. When, when minimum wage officially hits $15 an hour, it will be too expensive to hire people to do it. And they will have machines doing it. And the people who know how to program the machines, service the machines and fix the machines are going to be making six figures and mm -hmm. nobody else is going to be making anything. We've got to prepare our students for the new tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Fascinating. Well, thank you again. It's always wonderful to talk to you, Principal. Um, I'm excited about the the new school year coming up when you start this new high school. It's, and that's going to be amazing. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how do they do that? Do they just come to the school or? You can, you can come to the school. You can um, send me an email or you can call me at, at the school or my cell number. So let, let me give you a couple of phone numbers. First of all, the school's number, 954-473-4622. Um, you can send me an email, which is rob.stevenson at f is in Frank L flcoe so florida conference of education flcoe dot org mm -hmm. okay. you can send it to me there or you can i'm even going to put my personal cell phone number on here you can send me a text or you can call me at 813 sorry it's a tampa number 813-613-4332 if you know where the threes are you can get all the rest 813-613 Four three three two. I'd love to hear from you. Um, regardless, of course, nine through twelve, uh, K through eight. Um, but especially if you are a eleventh and twelfth grader, mm -hmm. and you say, "Hey, I want to come to your new school. I, I want to be one of the first. Because again, if we get critical mass, we'll start nine through twelve in the school. Mm -hmm. I want to hear from everybody." But especially those people, um, because if there if if there's a need, if there's a market, if people are ready to make the switch mm -hmm. next year, I would love to be able to accommodate you. Again, we probably need fifteen or twenty kids total in in um, in eleventh and twelfth grade, mm -hmm. and we'll have pretty good critical mass to be able to do what we need to do and. Uh, be able to have enough money in the budget to be able to hire staff and those kinds of things. Exactly. 
Exactly. Awesome. All right, Principal. Thank you very much for that information. And remember, you can also um, get in touch with us at 954-388-8780, and we can probably forward you that information to you as well. Principal, could you pray us out, please? Yep. We end? Thank you, Dawn. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to share what we're doing at Sawgrass Adventist School. And uh, mm -hmm. I just pray, Lord, please, that you will be with families as we raise our children. May we take it seriously, Lord, that we need to raise them for your kingdom. Mm -hmm. Because you are coming again. We are living in prophetic times. We see, we see it. May we not be like those people who turned their backs at Noah and old, of old and missed out on the salvation you provided on the ark. You're mm -hmm. coming again, Lord. May we be ready with our children. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, everybody have a wonderful afternoon or day and for the rest of the week. And hopefully we will all see you back here next time next week. Take care.